Art Award in um, 2021. She uh, attended um, art school in Italy, the L'Instituto d'Art, um, where she had her first solo exhibition and it was completely sold out. She later studied at New England School of Art and Design and Mass College of Art. Um, so I'm very pleased to introduce uh, Jory to you and I'm looking forward to the demo. Thank you. Well, thank, thank all of you for, for coming. Um, you can hear me fine? Yes. Good, good. Um, I'd like to do this in two parts. I did, a, um, I'm mostly gonna, gonna be talking about color and color studies, but I did a little um, PowerPoint that I'd like to show so, you to. Jory, to I'm sorry, can I interrupt you for a second? Sure. Can you pin yourself so that you are, or can everyone mute themselves? Otherwise you disappear when somebody makes a noise. So you. <laughs> okay. I don't know if you should, if you're host, you should be able Everybody, to. Everybody uh, mute yourself, please. Is that better? Um, hold on. Now I see you, yeah. Okay. Okay, good, thank you. I'm gonna speak up. You can also go to gallery nope. view and mute yourself, which is another way to do it. Everyone needs to mute themselves. Yes, Jory, you're not pinned. I mean, it's when not talk, gallery view. It's not gallery view. It's a uh, it's a uh, speaker view. Yeah, I'm sorry. Yeah, I I did pin myself. I'm gonna to switch to screen sharing. Just one sec. Can all see you see my screen? Yes, I can see it. You can yes, see I it. I can see it. Yes. Great. One sec. Okay. And now can you see it full screen? Yes. Perfect. Okay. Um, I know we have some extremely talented people in, in the audience. So uh, excuse me if I'm you know, going through a few things that I'm sure you already know, um, but these are just some of my ideas, things that are important to me. Um, definitely, you know, does your grass always have to be green? <laughs> um, that's just really important to me. I love experimenting and trying different things, you know, just trying to stay away from only copying photographs. Um, I mean, I love very realistic work, but um, for me, it's, it's more, a lot more fun when, when I can push it um, and look at different color palettes. Um, this is a cool, a scale that I actually found online, um, just really explaining how value and color work together. So if you look at row 50, um, uh, that's like the pure color and everything, everything to the left of it, you know, 20, 30, 40, we've added white, everything to the right of it, we're adding black. So it's just really showing um, color values. I know like some of my students see color fine, but have a little bit of hard time um, deciding what what value range it falls into. So this is a kind of fun chart for that. Um, because if we were to take out all color, we would still see the apple and recognize it as an apple. Um, um, so in, in this illustration on, on the right, where we have the black and white one, the values have been isolated into eight different values. So then we can easily see where we'd need to, to, to paint the our, our highlights and our darks. Okay, so coming from a graphic design background and there are a lot of artists and illustrators in my family, the power of design is really important to me along with color. Um, 
So, I mean, I know what, what's the saying that um, color gets all the credit and but value does all the work. But to me, I really think composition should get some benefit there too. Um, and just taking the time to find the best format. You know, often, like I've just got a, um, old mat that I've cut in two pieces. So just moving those croppers around so many ways in one, one photograph, I could maybe find six different paintings, um, you know, vertical, square, horizontal, cropping in super tight. So it's almost abstract that for me, taking that a few minutes of doing that before I start a painting has really helped me personally and, and my students a great deal um, instead of just painting everything you see. Because, <clears throat> I mean, as I'm sure, you know, you all know what leaving out, whoopsie, sorry, what you leave out of your photo can be just as important as what you're leaving in. Um, another thing that I try to think of now is what, what inspired me to start it? You know, what's my intention or reason for painting it in the first place? And just trying to, to focus on that helps, especially if there's some kind of emotion that I'm trying to convey. Because I think once we start painting, you're just having so much fun painting that you can lose track of what your, your real focus initially was. Um, so this is just showing three different croppings that I would play with on, you know, tan paper. You can use Tombow markers or, you know, black and white just for quick value studies, different croppings. This is just kind of a fun story. <clears throat> I was, I had a wild animal encounter at the Roger Williams Zoo and absolutely fell in love with this little, this little sloth. So you could see in the upper right is me with the mask on you know, holding this sweet little thing. So I knew she would be my next, you know, portrait study. Oops, went the wrong way, sorry. Huh, that's not, that's not good. Huh, well, there she is. So, um, you know, I tried different croppings, you know, not sure which format she fit best in. Um, in the end, I did like the square, even though her head is in the center. I just like that direct gaze that, that, she, was, that she was giving me. Um, so I first just did, just with the charcoal, just a quick little sketch of her. Um, sometimes I've been playing with using Sharpie <coughs> markers, um, especially if there's a lot of drawing involved. So I like combining both linear aspects and painterly aspects. So though all those black lines are just with a Sharpie, which works out great because then with, with the dry pastel on, so then when I add the alcohol for the wet underpainting, um, I haven't lost my drawing. Because so, sometimes that's a problem for me if I've spent you know, some time with the drawing and then I add the alcohol and I seem to lose so much of my drawing, I have to go back and restate it. So this way um, it's still there and I can, I can see what's under there. Um, so here she is finished and on the right, you'll see my photo reference. And yes, sloths are gray, but this little, this, this little sweetie was, didn't seem like she should be gray. She's just, just so colorful and lively and you know, loved eating grapes. Um, sometimes I'd hand her a grape and she'd reach out and grab my hand and pull it to her mouth faster because I was going too slow. <laughs> um, oh, so color temperature, that's, that's you know, an important thing to think of that um, cool colors with a blue un undertone bring to mind more of a calming effect and they actually do lower your heart. Where warm colors on the other hand are based on yellow undertones and tend to and convey emotions ranging from happiness to, to violence. Red instantly attracts, makes people excited and increases the heart rate. Just think of Coke and Red Bull. Um, knowing how to use color to your advantage can, can really help your work. Um, so this is a painting I actually did outside of the, this is in Marshfield at the um, North River Art Center. And just a simple way of, of using warm colors to advance and cool colors to recede. Um, even though this had an overall hot pink um, underpainting, still, I think the back is, is, can be receding even with that, with that in there. Um, alternatively, you can borrow color schemes from, from nature. 
um, just, you know, just leafing through a book, you may find, oh, I just love those colors. And wouldn't it be fun to do this painting, perhaps of some completely different subject matter, but using that palette? Um, just, I love experimenting that way. I mean, I usually make up my own palettes, but sometimes, you know, this can be a great way around it. So this was just a really quick sketch um, from, a, from a model at a, at a, in during life class. And his, his e the way the light was, his ears actually just seemed to be glowing. Um, so, you know, sometimes your just emotional reaction, if you just can put it down quickly instead of thinking about it, overthinking it, sometimes, I don't know, the things I do in 10 minutes are some of my favorites. Um, so this was an exercise where I took one photograph and, tr and looked at how many different ways could I paint it, and then how much further could I keep abstract again. So I was really doing two things at once, you know, playing with mood, time of day, and trying to get looser and looser, you know, personally, because I love to draw, for me to be looser and more abstract isn't easy. So as you can see, it even got you know, even crazier as I went on. You can't even tell, on the, you know, on the last one, you can't even tell what they were, but um, just a fun, just fun exercise. So this is another friend from the Roger Williams Zoo. Um, and I don't know if any of you have used um, Russia watercolors. I don't know if you're all muted, but I forgot to say, if anyone wants to jump in and has any questions, please do. You know, I, I don't mind. Are you all, oh, you're all muted. <laughs> Let me see if I can unmute you. Hmm. Hmm. I'm actually not sure how to unmute you. I think you have to do it yourself. Oh, everybody does it their own? Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. All right, good. I thought I could do one group unmute. <laughs> um, just to go back. So brush your watercolors in case you, if you haven't seen them before, they're, they're powdered crystals and you can spray the, you can spray the paper or shake the crystals and then with a brush or, or water um, spray on top of it. And they, they, move by themselves like they just start running and making the whole background is just the brush of watercolors um and if you if you look carefully you can see like i just did the whole background and then i painted the giraffe on top and what i really liked was seeing the background through the giraffe um it was just a, a cool way to unite it and and a little more playful you know kind of a a playful way of uniting the the subject with the background Jury, are you are, are you saying Russia watercolors or brush of watercolors? Brush O B R U S H O. Thank if you. you. Just, if you just go online, they're really really fun. They really are. They're they're a lot of fun. Jury, um, what kind of paper did you do that on? That was your. Ah, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They're fun. You, you might see a couple that I've done that with. Um, so this is an example. The photo on the left was already, it was so gorgeous that I was almost hesitant to even try to paint it. You know, sometimes I'd rather work from photos that aren't perfect because um, that was a little intimidating. And I thought, well, you know, I don't have to copy it. I can just have more fun with it. So as you can see, I just took it as a general inspiration and went a little crazy with it. I I love your marks on there on that uh, tree. To, oh, you're thanks. Fantastic. Yeah. Very chunky. I like your version better than the photo. <laughs> oh, yeah. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this is a little more realistic, but um, as you can see, they're not just gray tan rocks anymore. You know, I've, I've, I've taken a couple of workshops with uh, Albert Handel and just love his rocks and the way he adds these crazy colors in it. So I know I've been influenced by him. Come on, there you go. Uh, so just a super simple still life. This was a, a demo in a class, um, really just red, green and gray, if you look at the reference and decided, well, 
you know, sunlight is hot and, you know, so, you know, make it bright yellow and just, just pump everything. So in this one, I mean, I, I mean, I changed the background colors. I mean, the strawberries are realistic colors, but I mean, actually there's greens and purples and, you know, kind of funny colors hidden in there too. But um, I just, sometimes it's fun to take something that's really simple and see how you can, you know, make it something you've never seen before. So this is, this is actually right down the street. My neighbor's, uh, my neighbor's house lives on a pond and I was just mesmer mesmerized by... Um, hello. Hello. Oh. Hi, hi, Jeff, how are you? Uh-oh. The person on the phone, maybe, could you mute? a minute, I just have to shut off. I'm on a pastel video. <laughs> hello? Okay. <laughs> Who's talking? Please, un please un uh, mute yourself. Oh, good. Um, Hi. Jory, if I can um, just stick chime in. in. Yeah, <laughs> I just wanted to mention. So where have um, your week been? Yeah. Hello, Jory? Yeah. Yes. <laughs> Hi, it's Bonnie, and um, I'm I'm really enjoying all the different um, approaches you have. I'm really fascinated because um, I also like to switch up um, how I approach the application of pastel. And in the you know the pre painting, you were so chunky and impressionistic, <laughs> and um, there are elements of that in this one we're looking at now. But no. I see that that um, four by four, whatever two by four truck looks like it's much more um resolved if you will then yep. um, and is there a different application process involved you know if, if you see it in real life, if you see that truck in real life there's really not very many marks um you know it isn't really carefully rendered it's just that um you know i took i took some time to draw the truck before painting it um so that, you know, it, at that point, I just knew where to stick those few lights and they carried like that, the whole uh, mirror coming out of the truck is just like two little swipes of color. Um, so, yeah, you know, it depends on my mood too. <laughs> like the trees in the background are in a similar, you know, kind of chunky style. Um, yes, exactly. That's what I was noticing in this painting that there seems yeah. to be several different applicational approaches in this <laughs> one. And, um, and I love it because I think that the truck, you know, having somewhat of a more, even though you're, you know, I understand what you're saying that you didn't really, you know, um, do a lot of blending or whatever else is involved with that. It yep. just, it seems like it's closer to us perhaps because of that. So the perspective aspect really works with having the back ones more impressionistic and the stuff that's closer to us a little bit more resolved looking it really makes a, a difference in terms of how that depth perception good for us yeah i'm really glad to hear that because i Very really awesome. thank you and i really do spend a lot of time thinking of you know foreground middle ground background <laughs> i really i think about that a lot and and making things as they recede in the distance so much softer and duller. And anything in the foreground with sharper edges and bolder colors. Like I, I that's always on the top of my mind. So, so thank you. I really love the truck, how you did the colors. I love the yeah. truck colors. Mm -hmm. Thanks, thanks. This actually was a present for my sister. This is their, one of their favorite places in South Carolina. And, um, and again, you know, just I can't can't really paint them in those colors because they they were a little bit they're a little dull for me. So I I do you know I I pay a good amount of attention to the value. You know, I don't often change value a lot unless there's a really good reason. Um, but I I always like to make it look, you know, a little more crazy colors. It's more fun. <laughs> And here I am back at the zoo again, the Roger Williams Zoo. And I just love the way she was she was standing like that. Oh yeah, so these are the same brush show watercolors background. Um, and I did, I didn't do the whole background, the crazy color. As you, you can see the where on the right where it's really hot, the background is carried right over to her ear. 
Um, and then it isn't, you know, where she turns bluer and grayer because I really just wanted that feeling of real sunlight on her. I mean, she was indoors, you know, she can go in and out, but she was indoors, but I didn't want to paint her indoors. So I was just imagining how the sunlight would have hit on her and how all her colors might have changed. But I really love that. I love that background. <laughs> and I should take almost no credit for it because it just kind of paints itself. <laughs> okay, come on. Um, so this was a model, he was on Zoom. He was modeling for us. And the photo that you see is, is how he, you know, how he modeled. And then during break, you know, he looked up and I could see his eyes and I quickly took a screenshot of him because it was so much more interesting when I could see more light on his face and see his eyes. And plus, oh, for this one, for this, for this one, this piece of paper that I had was already purple. So that like started my inspiration because I wasn't sure his skin was so dark. You know, I wasn't sure how to deal with it. And I think, could somebody mute, could you mute yourself? Whoever's talking? Jack, it sounds like it might be you. Oh, sure. The host should be able to mute everyone. And that's the, the host right now is Jory and I cannot mute, I was trying. So Zach, please mute yourself because I, I think you might, oh, thank you. And Barbara, I don't know if you're, I can see if, I think you're also not muted. Yeah, pl please just unmute yourself if, if you want to, I'm happy to have you, you know, talk to all of us. <laughs> if you have a question, unmute yourself, but when you're not questioning, just listening, just please mute yourself so we don't hear any background noises. Thank you. Thank you. So honestly, I'll, it really helped just starting with the purple paper and that was the fluke. I had already toned the paper purple and just thought, oh, maybe I'll try that. And, and it, it helped it a lot. Um, you know, sometimes it's fun to create a narrative, like literally, literally, literally. Um, so for this one, I did the painting. He, he was sound asleep in the park and um, then thought, I kept making stories about him. Oops. And so I decided to, to write about it. So I wrote his, his, you know, some of what his story could have been in the background. And I just think it just made it a little more interesting. Oop, this shouldn't be in there. Well, it, this, this is an oil painting, <laughs> but um, it doesn't really matter. You know, I, I like mixing up mediums and it's still about color, light, you know, balance. It's all the same. This, I was with a girlfriend up in Vermont and uh, suddenly just screeched and pulled over on the side of the road and jumped out of the car. She thought I was crazy and ran down with my, with my iPhone and got the cows just as they were crossing the street. <laughs> um, so I just, oh my God, it was just like such a wonderful scene that I couldn't wait to get home and paint it. Um, Almost Beatles. Huh? Almost Beatles. The Beatles, Abbey Road. Oh, yes. <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> um, and at first I did do the building white and I thought, I don't like the building white. You know, it had, they have to be going into a red barn. <laughs> So that helped. And of course the purple road that helped. <laughs> so this was a quick demo that I did from eagles that were at the zoo. Um, and I think when I'm under a time crunch, I often like my paintings better because I don't have time to overwork them. So I just like the looseness of that. Another zoo friend. Um, this was a water, not brush but a watercolor background and it just, started, I had a few sheets of paper that were just abstract blobs of color and thought because he was so, so dark and so black that I thought, oh, it'd be really great to have all these colors in him so that you can see like on his arm, you're actually seeing that abstract background through his arm. And I, if it hadn't been for that, I don't, I would have never thought of putting the green and the orange and all those colors in his arm. So it's, it, um, can, can be a really good starting point. Oh, this is also oil, but um, doesn't really matter. Just um, happened to come upon this, this setup with these gorgeous flowers and had to paint it. And 
I think I, I toned that canvas hot pink. So I've done that, whether it's pastel or oil. Sometimes I like having a, you know, bright color shining through, especially if it's a lot of green. So this is the um, scene from the Artist Guild in, in Marshfield also, but just, uh, oh no, no, this one's in Plymouth, sorry, the Plymouth Art Guild. And I think my favorite part is that uh, purple shadow coming from the, from the chimney. <laughs> So this you'll see two stages for, for my underpainting. I did it co using completely um, complementary uh, colors underneath and then liquefied it with alcohol. Oh no, the first one is before I added alcohol and the second one, yep, added alcohol. It looks almost finished. And anyway, the big one is the finished piece. This one isn't that big. It's, it's maybe 12 by 12. And this is the piece I'm gonna demo for you today. And it's also the zoo. <laughs> and um, just the light, you know, this, I saw the light on these birds and I just loved it and couldn't believe no, none of them moved. Um, not that crazy about the composition or the colors, but just the, the light on the birds. So I did two, you know, yesterday I um, did two, no, three different color studies. The first one you'll see are pretty much the local colors. I mean, I'm using a much more limited palette and these are just quick studies, but pretty much the colors that I saw. And the second one, excuse it, it says warm. It should say cool, <laughs> cool color, cool colors and crazy colors, um, which I liked better. And then I thought, well, what if I change all the cool colors more to warm colors with some little bit of push it colors? And then I'm curious to know of the three, which, which do you like the best? If anybody wants to unmute. Uh, like this is like the first one, I guess. So you like the first one, okay. Yeah, yeah. I like okay. the middle one. I like the middle one. I like, middle middle one. I like the 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 middle one also. I can tell you why. I like the middle one, but there's it. something about the background of the warm one, the purple, it's really nice. Yeah. The, the middle one, um, there's more dark in it. So that, yep. the, so that the, um, what are they, ducks? So that they glow more. Yeah. It, it, and it's really interesting the way you mixed in the background of the middle one, especially um, the blue part, the way you mix blue and green and then put in that kind of slate gray. It just, it works really nicely. Hmm. I also like that the birds are the warmer part in the middle one, you know, where you have the cool background, the cool yeah. ground area but the, yep. the birds kind of pop out more as opposed to the lower one that has the warm bottom part. You know, the birds kind of sit into that. So I, I like the middle one better that way. Huh, that. Interesting. I don't know. Have, have, I like the top one and the middle one. And, 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 and the reason that I, the, I think the thing that I, that I like in common that we just mentioned is the darkness because I like that shape in the middle. Oh, interesting. Made by the back of the birds. Yep. Um, if I may, yeah. I think each one of them has a different thrust of subject. Like the first one, I sort of get the atmosphere of the water and whatnot. Yep. Um, the bottom one, it's like the subject is sunlight. Yes. And the middle one, the subject is the birds. Interesting. Huh. I like the bottom one. Yay! <laughs> That's the one I liked. <laughs> but but I can see the benefits of all of them. I mean, honestly, I could I could paint them three times, and it would be in very interesting to see how it would change. Um, because it's, it's actually a... all beautiful. <laughs> Thanks. I of them for different reasons. Yeah. Thanks. Yeah. I don't know. It's it's interesting. I I do this periodically with my students too, and most of the time. I'd say 90% of the time, people don't choose the, um, the local color, which surprises them. 
you know, because they think, oh, you know, they're always trying to match color. What color do you think that is? What color? What color is that? And I said, you can really make it any old color you want. <laughs> um, but but then when they, they do when they do three or four of these little, you know, five, 10 minute studies, not long, um, then often they'll say, wow, you know, I would have never tried. I would never use those colors. They're not my normal colors, but I really like it. And then and then I think, well, if it takes you like two or three hours to do a painting, your typical painting, right? why wouldn't you spend five, 10, 15 minutes doing some color studies first and see if you can get you know, a more interesting color palette? So that's really what today's about. Um, this is a, just a cool quote that I found. Okay, <clears throat> now I gotta change my, give me one minute because I have two cameras going. Okay, I just have to change my camera. Okay, can everyone see that? Yes. Yes. So you can see this pretty well. Okay, good. Yes, very light. That's okay, because there's, there's not much to see yet. <laughs> so I did do, um, you know, pulled out some colors first, mostly to save time. And, and I really tried to stay pretty true to my color study. And, you know, I'm trying not to look at this photograph that much, because if I do, it's going to look like those colors. <laughs> so I, I have in front of me also you know, these three, I know it's upside down, doesn't matter. So these are the colors I'm going to look at more so that I don't get, you know, I don't want it to be half this, half that, or it just might be all over the place. So I really try to look at my color study more than, 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 the, photo, than the photo reference. For the photo reference for details of the birds, I'll look at it. But um, I, I, I want to, I, I like this crazier palette. Jory, I, I just wanted to mention that I was unable to see the full uh, study, the bottom study. So I couldn't see that great color on the bottom. I, I, did, I couldn't see it on my screen for some reason, so. Oh, really? <laughs> I love it, yeah. This one you couldn't see before? I couldn't see the bottom part for some reason, yeah. Okay, okay. So now I see it, it's yeah. great. Good. So I do usually do some kind of underpainting. I'm not going to this time, um, partly to save time. And, and I like mixing it up. Sometimes I just like working really directly. I normally do lots of layers. Sometimes I do more limited layers. <laughs> so I, I don't really just have one way that I work. I just love trying different things. I do usually work dark to light, um, but you'll see there's sometimes as I'm doing this one, I won't be. And I think just because I did those color studies, I realized that in order to get those whites really white, that I want to, um, I'm gonna put those whites in early. I really am. And white's a color I almost never use, but um, little bits of white, I think are going to really stand out. May I ask a question? Hi, Jory, it's Lori Harden. Hi. Um, right now I'm getting everybody's on my screen and not just a close up of you. How do I change that? Yes, you need to change it to gallery view. No, actually to- uh, No, no, I'm sorry, speaker, speaker view. view. Sorry, speaker view. Speaker view. Yeah. Okay. Let me try that, thank you. Yep, is, is anyone else having that trouble? No? Hmm. Did that help under view? Should be the, on mine, it's the top right hand corner under view. You pull down and you can change it to speaker view. I don't have view on mine. I I'm just, uh, I just swipe right oh, or left. We there we go. Just Accurate. swipe it. 
Okay. Good, good. All right. Thank you. Good. That makes a big difference. So, so for almost every color, I've I've got a range of values from light to dark in almost, you know, the greens, the pinks, the blues, purples, the backgrounds, um, so that, you know, sometimes I can paint faster if I've already pulled my palette out and it's right here. I might, I might still reach over and add more colors, but, you know, I already know I've got the main things that I need. Um, Dory, do you, do you typically pre-select pre a palette? Half the time. <laughs> Yeah, half the, time, half the time I do. Yeah, and then I really, do, I paint faster because they're right there. So believe it or not, I'm going right to my whites because I want to make sure that they stay really clean. Yeah. And you, you, you probably saw, I, you know, I'm, I like about, about every brand of pastel. You know, I don't, I don't really, most of the time I don't really care. Um, I mean, definitely new pastels don't have the power that uh, the really nice soft ones do, but I love them too. I love them actually for, 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 I don't really do any finger blending, but sometimes I'll use new pastels for blending because they, they lay down so, you know, so little color, kind of a low power thing. So in on my little drawing, I did try to indicate, you know, I, I sketched out where I really want my lights just to, to save time. You're probably not seeing much when I'm adding white, sorry. But what you- What kind of really, surface are you working on? This is something I don't use that often. Uh, have you used Lux Archival? Yes, I have. It's great. Yeah, I love it because it's so white. Yeah. You know, and actually, I, your whites, the pastel is whiter than it, the Lux Archival. So we, I can definitely see it. Good. Because the Lux Archival is pretty white. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's, an, it's a nice white, really nice white paper. I do usually use UART, probably because it's a little cheaper. But um, sorry if sometimes my hand's going to be in the way. Sorry. Okay, so I think I'm going to build up the opposite way on the birds. Um, and just the fact that I've already did, done the three color studies, I, I know my subject better. You know, that's another nice thing. I mean, I had never drawn these, I think they're pelicans. I had never done pelicans before, but the fact that I already drew them three times can help me go faster because I'm, I'm more confident. You know, I know a little bit of pelican anatomy. Excuse me, do, do you always paint sitting down or do you paint standing up on an easel? I usually stand. Usually stand, so it affects your whole way you make your marks, doesn't it? It does. And right. it's also harder because I would also like turn my paper a bit from making some marks. Right. So, you know, just for the point of the demo. Right. Um, I, I felt like I got the best view for you doing it this way. Yes. And I, then I wouldn't keep being in your way. Right. You know, every time I tried it, I seemed to be in the way. <laughs> okay, thank you. Yeah. And of course, it's better to use your whole arm, you know, to make big marks. Um, I've also had two shoulder surgeries, <laughs> so I, it's hard for me to keep my arm up for extended period of time, but I still do it. I actually just use, what I do is I paint like this. I use my left arm to keep my right arm up <laughs> when I'm at an easel. Now, let's see. I want to make sure I don't do all five of them the same way, right? That'd be boring with the exact same colors. I don't think so. So I wanna think about which, which one of these two birds I want to be the queen. And I think that one. And then these will be a little softer and will disappear a little more. 
So I want to remember that. So you can see okay, even with my hands in the way, I'm hoping. Yes. Okay. So I am thinking values and I'm, you know, pretty much copying the palette that I already did. And I'm also trying to have little softer edges because they're, they're feathery. That's a little too dark. And also I try to just keep remembering where the light is. So the light's coming from here. So actually these heads should be darker, right? Because this is the shadow side on all of them. And they're a little bit side lit. No, no, sorry. Sorry, light's coming from here. Okay. And right now they're kind of just looking like abstract blobs. So I might go in, you know, I use pastel pencils sometimes too. You know, where I want little finer lines. But just try not to be too outliney, like too. Um, cartoony or because it could look a little bit like an illustration if I'm not careful. Well, I want to remember that this one is going to have a little more detail and activity than the rest. I know they're white birds, but I can have some pink, right? <laughs> okay. It's pretty hot right here. Oh, that's nice. I usually put these pumpy colors toward the end, but sometimes you can't resist. All right, all right. So, with this color, it's a nice color. So I don't like doo -doo, they're there. I don't like that. You know, they're too similar, those two lines. So that's better. They're still a little evenly spaced out. That's better. You know, I don't like too many patterns in the, sh in the shapes. Uh, let's see. I'm gonna put in some sky. Wait, nope. Before I do the sky, see, sometimes I can do the lights first. Now I'm going back to doing the darks first because I don't want to put in the sky in until I have 
some of this established so that I can, so if this is just, I'm see, I'm deviating a little bit from my study, but that's all right. <laughs> you can't be totally married to it, right? That wouldn't be fun. So I'm pretending there's trees and things back there. Not that one. So I love almost any color under purple. I should have done a little warm under there too. A little warm or under the green. So just not green with green and green. Also ties in with the pink that we have in other places. So I'm slowly getting lighter and lighter with my greens. Now we're getting some sunlight on the foliage. Then last, we got this really bright one. Love this one. It actually looks like all Florida colors, doesn't it? Ooh. Well, you can fix that. A little need sky holes. <laughs> I don't mind some of the white paper popping through here because it feels like air and sun. So this is, you know, I'm sure you've done a lot of negative painting. So I'm just, you know, further defining the birds by painting the background. It's just a neat way of doing those feathers without having to draw lines. Recording in progress. Hmm. And you, you probably notice I almost never use the tip unless I really need an edge. I'd much rather um, use the side like, like it's a brush. I'm going to switch. Switch to that. Sorry, what brand pastels are you using? There's a lot of unison. There's a couple of Giro's and a couple uh, Terry Ludwig's. It's the, the, I don't know if anybody's bought Tony Elaine's unison set, but a lot of these are from his from his new well because I just got it last week, and um, just I just love the colors, they're incredible. So now I don't want to be as hard edge around back here, right? I'm a little softer edges because they're in the background, but I can soften them later too. But I tend to be a little too hard edge. And I'm really trying to think about um, where it's much more appropriate to have soft lost edges.
So at this point, you know, there's pretty well blocked in just as far as general colors. So now do a little more fine tuning. Well, it looks way rougher in the camera than it does in real life. <sighs> hmm. All right. Just adding a third blue, you know, I, I, even though on my color study, it was just one solid blue because it was fast. Um, but I like now adding a little purple, a little lighter blue, just so it's more interesting than, you know, I don't want just one flat color. And I could do a smoother gradation, but I don't know. It's kind of, these are, these, the birds are kind of choppy. Let's see. I definitely need darker values in the birds. They're way too light. That helps. Be dark. That's gonna help. And then I may not do theirs. I probably won't do the other birds with this bright and orange red because I, I want the feeling that they're softer and they're going back. That other color was so gray. You know, you, you, you definitely have to add neutrals with all these brights. So the, the brights will pop, but it was just so kind of ugly color and gray. No, it has to be darker though.
you know, any chance I can get, I, here I am again adding just another similar color in an area. So we don't have some areas of just one flat color. But it's a little too bright, I think. Hmm. Well, it's funny when I, when I look at what you're seeing, I think you're seeing it in reverse, like a mirror image. Actually, that's good for me to see. Hmm. Are you right-handed or left-handed? Right-handed. Then we see it right. You do? Yeah. Oh, okay. That's but when I funny when I look at my screen, it's flopped. So I'm just grabbing some of these new pastels because I really like them for grasses. So with the sharp edges you can get. You're so quiet. <laughs> no questions? Can you say what the dark was that you were using to put in the grasses? It almost looked like charcoal. Was it pastel? It is. Peel and sketch charcoal by Generals. Ah, thank you. I love these. You, you know, you just take the string and pull it down and then it just keeps unraveling. So you'll always have a sharpened tool. Hmm. Yeah, I really like adding uh, vine charcoal or compressed charcoal, charcoal pencil. Um, in, a, in a few places, I just like, I like having a little bit more control. Well, I guess it depends on how finished we want it. I, I like the looseness of it. A little bit. I'm not crazy about this jump. So what can I do? What can I do? Nope. <laughs> That's better. A little bit of the background coming through the shadow. So it's not just totally cool and hot.
See him using the new pastel kind of to blend this area a little bit. It was just getting too busy. So if I just go over it lightly, it becomes a little more neutral. I don't, didn't want as much activity there as I'd put in. I could just knock the whole thing back. You, you know, I'm, when I'm using a it's pink, but knocks it down. Looks very pretty. Good. Their head wasn't popping out. No, so you know, just fine tuning just a little bit of details. But I want to be careful not to get so fussy that I lose, you know, the kind of the part it's kind of fun <laughs> now they, they probably shouldn't be as white right i like the fact that you don't use your finger to blend anything oh good really, yeah that's something that i tend to do and i shouldn't yeah, I find like a, I'm able, to, what's it called? Broken color. You know, that I like better. Like if you probably can't see as detailed as I can, but I'm seeing a lot of colors in there. And if I were to use my finger to blend it, it would be much duller and you'd lose that kind of the vibrancy of the colors all mixing together. So I think it helps. So I'm knocking these whites down because they're competing with these guys, right? To create a, I mean, even though they're only what a foot apart, <laughs> um, it's not like there's that big a um, dis physical distance, just by softening these guys and even along the edge, see I'm, I'm kind of going over the edge a little bit. I had really hard edges in some places and in some places I want it softened. So now just by going over it and going over the edge with a light value pastel, they're feeling softer. And can I say, I also like the fact that you use the white first. Yeah. Because when I tend to put the white afterwards, it never comes out white. Yeah, it can get muddy. Yeah, oh, it's very yeah, frustrating. It is. I, I, I that's, I agree. <laughs> so, <laughs> <laughs> it can be very frustrating. So, um, yeah. And now, and now the colors, like you know, avoiding mud is a huge issue, and the colors feel clean. Like that's really, really important to me. And the one thing that I realized because you started with the white. Yeah. You went progressively darker in very small increments. Yes. And normally we start from dark to light when you go from the dark to light. But right. Here you needed to do the reverse, but very gradually. Right. With the birds. Yes. But yet there and here, I started with the darks. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but, but it just seemed to need it. Because, I mean, I don't paint very many white things. But I definitely wanted these whites to look really white. <laughs> and I thought, you know, that'll do it. Give them a little bit. Just a little bit. Like not as much as the other ones. This will be a little highlight on that wing. And this is a really bright white. It's a really nice, it's, it's the brightest white that I own. What brand is that? It is a Unison. No. 
How am I doing with time? I don't know what time. Is there it's time you want? It's about 3.30. You have another half hour if you want to go. Okay. I actually... Um, not sure how much I'm, i can spend a little more time i mean i'll stay with you for as long as you want but you don't need to and we have questions also and i wanted to note that we yeah. actually had 31 we have 31 participants so what I, I apologize to everybody for the beginning issues if you have yeah. uh, difficulty signing on but i'm glad that we got to a reasonable size meeting good If anyone wants to pop in while I'm demoing with questions, I'm happy to too. Now I'm just seeing if there's like any little, at this stage, when I think I'm almost done, I would normally just stop and walk away <laughs> for just a little bit. Um, so that I don't go too far, but this is like a great time to give it any little extra pops that it might need or like that's a funny little hole right there like sometimes you can just erase with a with another pastel so i'm just kind of erasing things that i don't like instead instead of um using my finger so anything i want softened And I'm still putting a little bit of pigment down so it's not um, you know, ruining the, the energy of the cover of the colors. So sometimes since I'm the one who usually uses a lot of layers, yeah. I did try to use a pencil at the very end. Yeah. Other than occasionally it blends well, but if it um, it might even take pastel out. So Although I don't like blending with fingers, this is the point where I use what Maggie Price used to do and just tap if there's something busy, just yep. a little bit and instead of removing it just quiets things down. Yep. And sometimes maybe I should grab one. Let me just grab a brush. Yeah, tapping with paper towel or like these are very hard. I kind of like them but they might be competing with the birds a little bit. So just by quieting this down, it'll go back and hopefully the birds will pop more. I'm also getting, at first I thought I liked the little white things popping through and now I'm not so sure, so. Now I'd rather have them recede. but this is where I can get some nice softer edges and then the birds with their sharp edges are gonna come forward. I don't know if anybody else can see this, but we can actually see the pastel dust goes up in the air. Really? Yeah. Oh, good. My this is my, my new camera. It's a, a Logitech camera. Uh huh. And you can, it's much better uh, quality than, than certainly using my iPhone. Mm. And now I would like to open it up to you and feel, don't feel shy at all. And again, it's another thing I do in my class with, with all of us when we're about at this stage and we think we're almost done. I like to call what we call a committee meeting. And we all, we all look at each other's paintings and say, now what, is there anything, here we go. Is there anything that could make it stronger? Or is there any part that isn't working too well? And everybody, everybody should have an opinion <laughs> and is welcome. So I'll open it up to you. Is there anything that you think could make it better or that isn't working? Because so, we all, okay. 
I have one comment and I don't know, it might be the camera. Yeah. But the uh, one on up front, but uh, on the right hand side. So it seems his back is very, is probably the lightest light, which will draw attention to it. This bird? Uh, not this one, one uh, a little down and left, like closer to the middle, to the center. This one, yes. So note behind the, the head, it looks on the camera that this part uh, of their upper feathers is very, very light. I don't know if that's in reality. Here? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So all this, it's like a, a, almost a square of very bright white compared to anything else. And usually the lightest light will draw the most attention in a photograph or painting or... Yeah. But the lightest light here isn't against the darkest dark except for right there. Correct. But it's still kind of drew my attention because the it's other popping one, out too much. Because I really like like the uh, the, the other ones at the back have this um, peachy grade colors. And so compared to those, he doesn't have that. So mm. he shouldn't, I don't know. Mm. Yeah, I see what Jari, this is Anita. I, in looking I, at it, I, I see what I would like to see in it. Yeah. Is those two front birds, they have some really nice warm reflected light in their on their sides. Yeah. I think that orangey, I think that would help pull them forward and, and highlight them a little. Okay. I don't know. I, I you know, it's, that's what it's I your noticed. painting, but that's what I would like to see. <laughs> yeah, I'm kind of with Anita on that one. If it if it were Me my too. painting, yeah. I would probably have more contrast of of light and dark in those two front birds. Okay. It's interesting because I'm seeing two views of the painting. One is the full screen, and then one is the little thumbnail in the gallery. And it gives you a really different perspective, but I'd like to see darker darks on those first front two birds. Yeah, I agree. Okay. Um, and the warm shot. reflection, yes. The warm reflection really makes those birds special. This is Char, and I second and third what everybody is saying. I was sort of missing the pinkish orange that was in the front birds. Also, I'm seeing that that bird you're looking at right now that you had your hand on, his head, the part that we can see is actually more in shadow. Yeah, it is. And the way you have them, um, it's all, yeah, yeah. 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 I love that. I love, I love, you know, it, I never feel like a, uh, I don't know. <laughs> but I'm the only one that can see. We can all see. <laughs> and sometimes when you're doing it yourself, you become a little blind, you know, because you can't see everything all at the same time, you know, when you're doing it. Unless you give yourself a little space to think about it. Huh? Plus, uh, Jory, you weren't able to step back from it. <laughs> That's true, too. That would help. Take a, a break. I think it's re it's really beautiful. Uh -huh. uh, really beautiful. I love all your colors. And I agreed about the, the little touches of the orange, but I think it's okay. going cool, beautifully. Yep. I wanted to get the value better before I add the oranges. Well, you know, they're reflected up because the that helps even this one's a little, he's a little too see there it is the value that even though i'm going so crazy with color if my value's off they don't read as well you know they were a little flat i'm a little careful there Okay, get some reflection on these guys. How about that? That helps. Yeah.
Looking good. You should sign it. Stop. In other words, <laughs> stop. Stop right here. All right. Yeah, you guys are right. What a difference. Making these darker. Mm -hmm. Adding lovely. lovely. Reflected light. That helped. Helped a lot. Now I have a real sense of the bird sitting in the sun. Good. Yeah, it was too, all the same value. Mm -hmm. Yep, it was. Good. And that, you know, if, if you recall from the PowerPoint, I said what I loved about it was the light on the birds. <laughs> so oh. if I can't get that, that was my intention, right? And one of the challenges, because we work from a photograph and yep. the photograph may be washed out a little bit in the highlights, then yep. the reference, you have to invent it. it. You don't really see a lot of detail in those highlights. So yep. that's a challenge. But I really like those soft, very light pastels that you used to show those feathers. Good. Yeah, it might, it might be done. We'll leave it alone. See, that's when I'm like, I could do it. No, leave it alone, leave it alone. <laughs> <laughs> ah. <laughs> it's hard stopping, isn't it? Ooh. Yes. Oh, yeah. yeah. It really is. <laughs> Especially when you're having so much fun and you know you have a few more minutes. But I also know the damage I can do in five or 10 minutes. You know, <laughs> just because I want to keep playing and showing off or something, you know, and I could kill it. And I like... I actually even like this lost edge. You know, the, this bird's kind of just disappearing into the sky. And I like that. <laughs> even though I'm so tempted to separate her, you know, I think places like that that happen are, are, are interesting. Mysterious. Yeah, a little mysterious, but you still get the general feeling. Yeah, a ghost bird. Yeah. My favorite part is the shadows underneath the birds. I think oh, they good. just really are so um, beautifully rendered. Oh, good. Because you, you, could, you could say, I struggled with those. You know, I kept changing my mind and I kept, you know, wasn't working, wasn't working until finally I'm okay with it. Oh, I think they came out just perfect. Oh, good. Thanks. Yeah, that, you know, you don't always get it the first time. You really, you really don't. Oh, I see something wrong. And even the greenery, I think, is loose, especially on the right hand side. But not too detailed. Doesn't take, doesn't take space. Oh it's boy. Very loose. Oh boy. Ah. Oh good, thanks. Oh, achieve. Ouch. Ah. And you save those. <laughs> oh yeah. Ooh, I like that. Look at that. Look at that. Pop of color. That helped. Yes. That helped. She's a little dark one here. Needed it. Yeah, I think so you created the focal point really well. Yeah, that helped. It needed that. Right. That little bit where I didn't have the color anywhere else, but just seemed to need something dark under there. All right. You know, the thing is, it will get more and more realistic as you add detail. Um, you know, you're starting from the big shapes, the smaller, smaller, smaller. But if I start going, oh, look at the shadow under those feathers, and oh, look at look, under, look at the little, then it's going to start getting too fussy for me. So I'd rather have it still have some energy, even though it might have some messy parts. I think it's more interesting than getting so tight. Now something's funny here. I don't like so. <laughs> Couldn't, she didn't really have any form. Oh, I just took a Casey Klon um, 
Zoom workshop. Who I'm sure most of you know him and he's a, he's a colorist, which I wasn't even quite sure what that really meant. But he said something I just didn't get for the longest time. He, he said, form kills color. And I'm like, what, what, what? <laughs> and he said, you do, as soon as you start rendering the form to make it look three-dimensional with light and shadow, it's no longer about pure color. Mm -hmm. So I guess I'm getting it, but I love form. So <laughs> I'm really not a colorist, but I just thought that was a really interesting um, thing to say. Because I guess you're going with the values stronger. And if you yeah. wanted to be a colorist, you needed to let, not let go, but um, use the color to show the form. Yes, exactly. Without a gradation, just with one pure color next, or a color next to another color to create the form instead of the way, you know, we're taught for, you know. To, was it Paul Gauguin who did all this, this still life that he was using color to show a form? Not Paul Gauguin, sorry, uh, what's his name? Paul Cezanne. Oh, Which yes. Is, right? Yes, yes, that's true. Uh, and I- I didn't hear that. I couldn't hear it either. Somebody was talking on the phone and we could hardly hear the comment. Oh. No. But you can write it maybe in the chat. Hmm. Okay. I'm going to stop for here for now because I think it's good. But um, any, do anyone else know really about colorists and the difference? And Ooh. not How really. could, No. Yeah, that's a new one for me. Hmm. Even though I kind of thought maybe I was a colorist because I push color so much, I guess I'm really not. <laughs> I think you are. I know <laughs> you are too. <laughs> I know I just like expressive, you know, think, artwork. Have they not um, defined? Um, oh, I should turn it. Uh, what's his name? We used we had him for a demo. Um, he passed away. Oh yeah, Khan. No, Khan. Oh. Yes, Khan. Yes, yes. Khan was a colorist. I think Julie Friedman is defined as a colorist for many of us. Mm -hmm. So it's the use Oops. of color more. Yep. I wouldn't worry about definition so much and just paint the way you like to paint. It's quite successful. <laughs> Thank you. You're me, welcome. Because I think let me just switching the camera. I'm very, very cynical about very those kinds of categories. So is, yeah. that your, is that your uh, studio? And would you like to show us around? I don't know. If you can. Can. I don't know if you can because now you have fixed cameras, probably. <laughs> <laughs> I could I? I could, yeah, maybe if I unplug. You know, like point to different areas, maybe how you organize your studio, if you want to. But if I do that, you're going to see that I only, well, I only cleaned half my steam. Well, you know, we'll ignore that. that. <laughs> we'll ignore that. Because we got you on uh, I think I can. Surprise. I think I can. Oh, oh good. Yeah. I, I can show off. All right. Yes. All right. Very oh. large studio. Let's see. Can you see her? Yeah. So, wait. It's hard to navigate this. Oh boy. Can you see that sculpture? Yes. Mm -hmm. So that my dad did of my mom. Wow. Oh, wow. Yeah, it's in bronze. Beautiful. That was when we were in Italy. Um, oh, this is cool. So I got a thing about my mom. <laughs> so that is a pencil drawing that my grandfather did of my mom when she was 22. Isn't oh, it beautiful? beautiful. I love it. Just beautiful. a little pencil drawing. So he, he, my grandfather illustrated the first 34 volumes of The Wizard of Oz. That is so cool. Yeah. Wow. So he, he was amazing. Um, wow. So I have too many paintings. What was it? What was your grandfather's name? John O'Neill. John O'Neill. Okay, I know those. All right, very good. That is, that is totally cool. I grew up on those. 
for those you saw those guys. Oh. This is a that's an Albert Handel uh -huh. from a from a demo. Now we're going to the messy side. So, so can you even see them? Yeah, yeah. You so, see the guy that was on resting on the grass, and uh... and all these more paintings from one show came down. I actually have a show up right now that I have to take down next week. I don't know where I'm going to put all thirty more paintings. I don't know where I'm going to put them. <laughs> um, Another show. So this is my easel where I usually work. Uh -huh. yeah. Some of my pastels. Uh -huh. I don't know if you can see. Yeah, we do. Organized by color and value. Yeah. And so that guy, I did that sculpture. So there, that girl over there, that was the sculpture my dad had made when I was 13 and we're in Italy. Um, how did you wind up in Italy? Oh, this is interesting. Oh, just the best part is our backyard. Yeah. I don't know if you can see the pond. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, that's your own pond? Yeah. Oh my. <laughs> I know. And when we go out in the canoes and kayaks, you don't see any other houses. Wow. Yeah. It's you nice. ever started like a painting a day of the pond? Oh, mm -hmm. sure. I did a lot of them. Well, not painting every day, but yeah. So I, I just built these shelves in this old piece of furniture because I'm like, I don't know. I can't. I have no place to put stuff. So that really helped. Uh -huh. so I usually put them in the um, those clear view bags. Uh -huh. So now I can come back. Oh, you oh you asked how do we get to Italy? Oh yeah. So I'll try to do the short version. Um. So we we lived in Saddle River, New Jersey. <laughs> oh yeah, <laughs> and. Um, my dad was vice president of Alpine Geophysical Associates, and and they were it was between him and another guy, and he didn't get president, so he quit. <laughs> he quit. He came home. We had five kids, six well six kids then, and he just told my mom that he was done. You know, he was in his early fifties. He was he was done. He wanted to do something else with his life. <laughs> And so he started taking classes at the Art Students League. Now, at that point, he had never done anything artistic in his life. And um, within a year, he won the Guggenheim Award for a year's study in Europe. Wow. But, I know. But I really, he was such a good salesman and such a good talker that I, you know, this is bad, but I just think he talked his way into it. I do. I do. <laughs> He would just impress people with just the way he would talk. Um, and they were very abstract, big sculptures that he was doing. So anyway, so we spent the summer going all through Europe, trying to decide where we wanted to live. And hands down, everybody loved Italy. Um, so he rented a, like a, there wasn't a villa. It was like an old stone house with another little stone house in a tiny little village in Solaio which is like, like, imagine the mountains about that steep. So here's the ocean. And then there's Sulai, a little tiny village with only, I don't know, a handful of houses lived up there. No, we went from five bathrooms to no bathroom. You know, we just had to pour water down the toilet. No, no hot water. We had to go to public baths. Um, it was great. Loved it. Just loved it. And it, somehow he got in, so well, somehow, because he's such a good talker, he was working in a in a studio in a foundry um, where Henry, Henry Moore worked. Henry Moore oh, wow. and, and I don't know if anybody knows Jacques Lipschitz. Um, yeah, sure. Like really, so I mean, it was amazing. So we ended up extending it and staying there for two years. And how old were you? Um, Thirteen and fourteen. Yeah. So you learned to take chances. I had no choice. <laughs> <laughs> like in life, I'm sure you applied it. <laughs> <laughs> and the, the funny thing is that, um, well, I started school, you know, not knowing any Italian public school. And so did my brother. My sisters were all in college. And um, <laughs> the, their second language was English. So when I sat in English class, I would just sit there with my mouth open and shake my head and go, whoop. <laughs> 
because I had no idea what she was talking about in English. And then I'm in Italian class. I didn't know what they're talking about in Italian because <laughs> her English was so bad. <laughs> um, but it was a wonderful experience. It really, it was great. So that's how we got to Italy. And then, and then I had a total dream come true that the one thing on my bucket list was to someday lead a painting workshop in Tuscany and to go back to that little village and last October I did. I brought, you know, nine wow. students and we wow. were there for nine days and it was fabulous. Just every, you know. Did just you meet like, your classmates? Excuse me? Did you meet your classmates? From no, no, I didn't, I didn't. I hadn't, you know, been 50 years. <laughs> <laughs> I had lost, I had lost track of everybody. <laughs> yeah, I wish I had, but. But I, I brought pictures when we lived there and went up to the village and showed the pictures and almost everyone was dead, you know, because they, oh. you know, loved, yeah. but, but they, they, they remembered like, oh, I'm so-and-so's cousin. And I, I remember Paula or Pauletta and she was a cousin of this and this and this and blah, blah. but the actual village hadn't changed at all. Just <laughs> new people, but they were all relatives of the people that had died. <laughs> yeah, it was cool. It was very cool. Nice. Yeah. Any other questions? So if none others, then... Uh, uh, I have a question. I have a question. Uh, do you... Uh, I, I, anybody use fixative? Fixative. At the end. Occasionally. Rarely. <laughs> yeah, rarely. And it's usually if I've really lost a lot of tooth and I just need to build up a little more. Um, otherwise, no. Aren't you afraid that uh, it's passed out? Yeah, but if you really smack it, you know, usually they're mad. This is just paper, but I mean, even okay. a lot, a lot falls off. Okay. And okay. I don't use a mat. I use spacers. So, gotcha. um, I, and I have a great framer. I don't do it myself. So, um. No, I have another problem. Okay. okay. <laughs> Thank you. Lori? Yeah? If I may say, I thoroughly enjoyed your demonstration. Thank you so much for sharing. Oh, thank mm -hmm. you. Lori, it was delightful. Thank you so much. And Jory is actually interested in uh, coming to New Jersey and giving an in-person workshop eventually, which would be great. <laughs> that would be nice. Yes, it will be. Good. So if yeah. no other questions, uh, before I let uh, Marianne uh, summon, uh, sum this uh, and say some departing words, uh, Jory just uh, returned the hosting capabilities to me. So I can uh, end up the meeting later on. And Marianne, do you want to say some closing comments? Oh, I, uh, it, this was wonderful uh, to see your process. And uh, the slideshow was so informative. And I just want to thank you for being our demonstrator. Oh, thank you. <laughs> I was nervous. I was pretty nervous, but thank you. <laughs> thank you so much. We all enjoyed it. <laughs> everybody, you. thank you for coming today and showing up. And again, I, our apologies for whatever link issues we might have had. Oh, here. yes. Yeah. <laughs> thank you, Jerry. Thank you, thank you so much. Thank you. 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 See you Wonderful. on May 2nd for that special meeting about the elections. And I do hope some of you at least uh, will consider uh, joining and, and we'll see you then. Thank you, Jory. And thank Nicole, you. What time, what time is that thank Zoom you. meeting? Uh, I don't remember by heart, but it, this is evening. So it's probably somewhere around 7.30, maybe 7.00. I think it's 7.00. Yeah, well, okay. so we'll send that link again. And um, I want you to announce it now. Yeah, well, I did at the beginning and we'll announce again and send again and make sure that everybody's okay. So thank you, everybody. And thank you, Jory, again. This was fascinating. Thank you. Thank, thank you. For you. The thank you. you. It's like, bye, bye. 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 Thank you. Uh, not a, Jory.